My name is MK and I am the Platform for Energy Access Knowledge's Manager. Um, and hopefully when Rebecca has a chance to jump in, who's our Chief Research Officer, she'll also be here to introduce herself as well. So today I'll be giving you a little bit more about PEAK and what PEAK is about. So we'll be showing you everything there is to know about the Platform for Energy Access Knowledge, also known as PEAK, but just a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. In the interest of time, please hold your questions until we get to the demo of the site. You can type them into the Zoom text box and we'll try and address those and other live questions during our Q&A, which will be at the very end. For our agenda today, we will tell you more about why building Peak was important for, the, for Power for All, give you a demonstration of the platform and its unique and exciting features, how you can support Peak and how Peak can support you and your company, and as mentioned before, we'll also have time for any questions that you may have. So jumping right into it, let's start with what is Powerful. Powerful is a global campaign to accelerate the market-based growth of decentralized renewable energy. Powerful believes DRE is the key to achieving universal energy access. With a coalition of nearly 200 DRE companies and civil society organizations, Powerful advocates DRE as the fastest and most cost-effective path to modern energy services for the 1 billion plus living in energy poverty. Powerful does this through communications, country-level engagement, education, and action to create the political, financial, and policy context needed to accelerate access to energy by 2030 as per SDG 7. So what was the need that Powerful's team was trying to address? Firstly, Powerful saw that there was a need for data-supported arguments to change how institutions thought about DRE and its ability to address energy poverty. In addition, both public and private entities needed tools to make DRE to market in a seamless and cost-effective manner. As practitioners, you know the difficulty of engaging and stimulating a market that in many countries is very nascent. There's a lot of data out there, but there was a need to turn that data into something that is easier to engage with, but still brings out the most critical facts. So what was the solution? Of course, the solution was PEAK. PEAK, which is also known as the Platform for Energy Access Knowledge, aims to provide shareable and usable knowledge for key actors of the DRE sector. PEAK achieves this with a multi-pronged approach of data synthesis, data generation, aggregation, and visibility. The PEAK research team prepares content that many of you have seen before, such as fact sheets and research summaries, which provide compelling data-driven talking points about GRE's role in achieving universal energy access. The team also undertakes primary research to address the unanswered questions that the DRE sector so badly needs to be answered, such as identifying the best policies for enabling DRE. PEAK, which is why we're here today, is an interactive platform and it is the latest addition to this trifecta and it aggregates the best energy access data and provides essential tools, which I'll talk more about, for the sector to transform these large bodies of data into usable knowledge. So what exactly is PEAK? So PEAK's technology integrates a select portfolio of open access applications that together facilitate the ability to process and synthesize relevant publicly available reports and data to make sure that your message gets across to a broad user audience. To perform these tasks, which I will also go into during our demonstration, PEAK's core areas of functionality are around the federation of existing data platforms, so grabbing data from existing platforms, data storage and data indexing, which I'll also show you during the demonstration, inline document annotations, as well as a very sector-specific smart search engine. We also have the ability to make spatial and graphic data visualizations instantly. Again, this will become more, more clear and more apparent when we go into the demonstration. So Peak was built with users like you in mind and thinking what kind of functionalities that they would need. 
Peak's core functionalities, as I just talked about, are really centered around fact finding, instant visualizations, and document management. Though some functions on Peak are available to you without an account, as a user, you get the most out of Peak when you have an account. For an example, you can have access to what's called a working group. A working group is assigned to you dependent on your email domain that you use when you sign up for an account on Peak. For example, as a Powerful All person, my email domain is Powerful All. This allows me to work collaboratively with my colleagues who use the Powerful All domain. This allows you to see documents and annotations that they may have, charts and maps. And as you can see in the example too, here, if a group of practitioners want to review, for example, microgrid literature, they can go on Peak, and through their working group, they can review, annotate, and organize relevant documents together. They can also upload documents onto Peak to make sure that that library is more personalized. Energy practitioners like yourself might want to work with health practitioners and think a little bit more about how those linkages work. You can go to Peak's resource summaries as well as use our library and search exact phrasing to get energy and health facilities documentations. That's just a little bit of how Peak can be used. Over the course of Peak's build, build out, we've had the pleasure to work with the steering committee and partners who are a great help to our ability to get to Peak where, to where it is today. The steering committee represents a broad spectrum of the sector, including researchers, nonprofit organizations, practitioners like yourself from around the world. The support was invaluable to the content and functionality of Peak. We would like to say a big thank you to Mobisol, World Resources Institute, Humanist Institute for Cooperation with Developing Countries, also known as HEROES, DLab at MIT, Gogla, the Schatz Energy Research Center at Humboldt, and the Energy Access Program, Nicholas Institute at the Duke University. In addition, Peak's technology and research capability is built on strong partnership with academic institutions around the world, leading the way in new and innovative ways into energy research. We partner with the Strathmore Energy Research Center at Strathmore University in Nairobi, the Renewable and Inappropriate Energy Laboratory Rail at the University of California, Berkeley, as well as the Energy Access Program um, at Duke University. So just before we get into the demonstration of the platform, like I said before, Peak is designed really to simplify data synthesis for the energy sector, for folks like yourself, by combining really an essential number of functions and data for users. During this demonstration, I will showcase to you sector-specific search functions, our specialized library, document annotation and management, data visualizations and, ana and, ana and analysis, excuse me, and data importation. I will also show you the pros of having an account as well as how to use to the best um, your working group. Just checking in, can everyone see this screen? Looks good. Yes. Thank you so much. So welcome to the Peak platform. This is Peak in and itself. We will start with the research tab, which is over here. And just a little bit of a heads up, I am based in Botswana, so some things might not load as quickly as possible, but if you just bear with me, they will load. So to start off, we have what we call our ontology on um, the right of our screen. And this is how you would search for things like if we were looking at DRE economics, you can click on that and think about maybe some sort of investment in DRE economics. Maybe you want to talk a little bit more about the loans that happen here. You can click on that and all the documents that will come up here would be themed as such. We can also use Peak's 
search engine up here. So if I was to look up clean investment, this would pop up. It would also pop up some snippets of exactly where these words pop up within that PDF. So in this particular one, it shows up 34 times. But as you can see, this is not exactly what I wanted. I really wanted clean investment. So I can go back into my search and I can look for the exact phraseology. So when I look for that exact phrase, it should pop up exactly where um, clean investment comes up as two phrases. Um, just bear with me for a second. It seems my internet is being a little slow. Well, while that's happening, and for the sake of time, you can also see when you make a search, you can look at all the documents that come up as clean investment, but you can also look up any annotations that might have clean investment in them, any data sets that might have clean investment in them, as well as any images that might have clean investment in them. In addition, you can also view directly within that document the annotations that might come up. For example, if you're in a working group, those annotations that your colleagues allow you to see will pop up here. You could also view the images and the document info. If you find that the document info is not exactly as it should be, you can also edit the metadata for that particular document right in here. Unfortunately, this is the fun part of working in Botswana is trying to make sure that the internet is working. There we go. So I just wanted to make it clear that you can make exact expression and be able to search that immediately. So now, you, as you can see, this is very definite in terms of how this phrase is coming up within these reports. And like I said, you'd also be able to see those snippets as well. You'd also be able to see the annotations, data sets, and the images that I discussed. So moving over into the actual annotations. If, for example, you clicked on this document and you wanted to annotate it, you'd be able to click here, which is the new annotations, that gives you the ability to comment and highlight, but also to view all the other annotations for example, that your working group are working on. You'd also be able to see the document images, which I hope will come up, which are usually charts, maps that are within a PDF, as you can see here. Another way to use peak search would be to go over here, which is by regions and countries. So by regions and countries, you would click on, for example, Nigeria. And within that, you would get back all the documents where Nigeria is mentioned, as well as all the data sets that are relevant to Nigeria. You can then also filter them by geospatial data or non-geospatial data as well. If you want something even more specific, you can actually type in the title or whatever you're looking for right in the search button. And actually speaking of geospatial data, I think now is the best time to take you over to geovisualizations. Much like the library, you can sort or search by regions and countries over here, by sources, but also by a specific title, if you know a specific title that you're looking for. But also all the data sets are right here and you can scroll right through them. So for now, let's just type in Kenya and see what pops up. So we have Kenya wind zones, PV zones, electricity transmission. So I'm just gonna click on a few of those for now. You can also change 
the type of map that you want. So if you wanted it to be light, if you wanted it to be a satellite version, or if you wanted it to be a terrain version. I'll go back to dark because that's what I prefer. After that, you can save said map and you can save it so that only you can view it or so that your work group gets to view it or everyone who's using Peak can view it. You can also share that map directly to Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. From time to time, you will find that a layer obscures another, for example, like here. If you find that's the case, I have layered my map, Kenya wind zones, electricity transmission network, and then PV zones. You might want to layer it PV zones first, and then wind zones, and then electricity transmission network, and that might make it easier to see. In similar fashion, if we go over to data visualizations, you can make a chart. You can search for countries, so countries and regions similar to the map, but you can also search by source if you know a particular source that you're interested in that the world development indicators. But again, you can also search by the specific title. Let's say for today, I'm going to look at Angola and their access to clean fuels and technologies. I can then use what's called the slider to get very specific years. And I can also save the map similar, sorry, I can also save the chart similar to the map and save it for myself or for my working group or for anyone else who may need to see it. I can also then share it onto Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. I can also save said map as a PNG, a JPEG, or as a PDF document. I can also download that original data set, that raw data, if need be. So where do these saved maps actually go? So this area of Peak is where it is paramount for you to have an account. This is my docs and data. Those saved maps end up here. It looks like someone is making an example right there. But for example, this Uganda electrification rates is a map that my, or rather a chart that my colleague has made and I'm able to see it because she has saved it to our working group. Some of these are mine and some of these are other people's. It seems someone is also um, putting together some charts right now. So that's great to see. You can also do it by non-geo, so you can only see the charts or by geo, so you can only see the maps. Like I had mentioned before, the idea of a working group is really important because it allows your colleagues to see not just your maps and charts, but also to see your annotations. And I'll just take you over there right now. So, like I said, my working group is for Power for All. And once it loads, you will see that my annotations that I see are from someone else at Power for All. So they've made it so that I can view their annotations as well. So now you've seen some of the ways that you can search and create things on Peak. But what if the data you're interested in is not available on Peak? Well, you can upload or import data directly onto Peak. In order to upload data, you will need an account. Ideally, these data will be publicly available if you're posting it to be viewed by everyone and be specifically about energy access, decentralized renewable energy, and are not already on the Peak library, which you can check by using the exact phrase search function that I showed you before, before you upload that data onto Peak. In addition, please take time to read our terms of use right at the bottom along with our privacy policy before you upload anything onto Peak. So let me show you exactly how to upload something. So you would pick who gets to see it, whether it's your work groups or everyone. You would say that you have read our terms of use and have permission to upload this. But for now, let's say I want it only for myself. I would then click if I wanted to upload a, a document, which would be a PDF, a doc, or a PowerPoint, but you can also upload using web pages. So you would drop your URL right into there. However, 
just be mindful that this does not work for data sets. Data sets need to be uploaded here. And again, it would be either a JSON, a CVS, or an Excel file. If I've uploaded it as a document, for example, and I only want me to see it, it would end up here under documents. Under documents, I can then filter it so that just I can see it right there. Or I can make it so that my working group can see some of those. Or I can make it so that I can see all the documents out there on the peak library and then favorite them so that they show up in my favorites, like so. The data sets would show up here. And similar to the documents, it would be by working group, you, either your documents, either you favorited it or it's something that is in the public domain. And again, you can filter it by either geospatial or non-geospatial. You can also sort by when this document was put up or when this data was put up. And I just wanted to give two quick notes about uploading onto Peak. When you upload, for example, a data set onto Peak, depending on the file type, it may need to be formatted so it can be visualized. So by visualized, we mean that it can show up here in the geo visualizations or the data visualizations. Sometimes these files will need to be formatted. So just go and make sure that your um, data set is not being visualized. And then please allow for 48 hours as someone has to manually make sure that um, your file is meeting that format in order for it to be format in order for it to be visualized within peak and this may take a little bit longer which is why we ask for 40, 48 hours depending on how many uploads we're getting per day in addition peak will also try and grab as much metadata as you can see here we try and auto detect the title and metadata but sometimes you may need to enter for example titles or publishers into um, the documents info and if for any reason after you've uploaded this document, you need to change the metadata um, of this document, the document will need to be re-indexed. Re-indexed is just a fancy word for the fact that we'll need to grab all that data um, once again from that document to make sure that all those search functions I showed you before work on that, on that particular document so that we're able to get, for example, those, those images out of there and also all that document info. Sometimes this may take up to 10 minutes, but uh, we think um, within 10 minutes, you should be able to come back and be able to see it again. So this basically just means that the document will have disappeared from the peak library momentarily, not gone forever, of course. And after it's been re-indexed, it will show up in the peak library once again. So in practice, how can you as a DRE practitioner actually use PEAK. Let's say, for example, you're a lead on a group initiative for best practices for clean energy investment for practitioners in East Africa. So how can PEAK help with that? So you would start with our search functions that I showed you earlier, or if, for example, if you wanted to start here with Kenya, you could use our regions and countries file um, filter to make sure that you're getting data about Kenya. You can also use Peak's exact um, search functions to make sure that you're getting exactly what you want. So here with the, the regions and countries filter, you get all the documents, you get all the data sets that are relevant to Kenya. Maybe later on, you'd also want to go back and search for say Uganda and other East African countries. You would also then also go into geospatial, our geospatial tool here. And like I had done earlier, search Kenya or Uganda and make maps, but you can also go into our data visualizations and create charts to support your argument, which you can also share, of course, onto social media. Of course, in due time, your colleagues would also want to have input onto what you've been doing, and this is where the working groups come in. So you'd be able to save your document annotations, all those documents you found, or you'd be able to save all those maps and charts that you found and get the thumbs up from those colleagues as they'll also have access to them and you can work on them together. If that, date, that documents or data sets that you think that are not in the peak library, you can upload them to your working group library 
and personalize the library for the task at hand. So instead of having a very long chain of emails with numerous attachments, P can be a platform to keep that project very streamlined, very organized, and very collaborative. So just to reiterate the highlights of this tour, once again, PEAK offers you under the research tab, but also under the regions and countries tab, a specialized library of documents and a very sector specific search function that makes finding documents for practitioners like you much easier. In addition, you can save all your annotations and manage your documents by favoriting them or uploading them directly onto PEAK for future use. PEAK also offers instant data visualizations that can be saved, downloaded, and shared onto social media so you can engage with your audience on a real-time basis. The platform offers our users the ability to import new and important publicly available data so that your and our library continues to grow as the sector continues to grow. Most importantly, we want to keep our library up to date. PEAK offers users the opportunity to work collaboratively with our colleagues by building a very personalized library, sharing document annotations, and sharing data visualizations. And like I stated earlier, though some functions are available to you without an account, you will get the most out of PEAK when you have an account. And you can easily just register or log in right up here. I just also want it to be known that if you click on our help button right here, There's a quick overview video about Peak right here. That should help if you are stuck with any one of our functionalities. So just to go back to the presentation, as some of you may have noted, Peak is currently still in beta, and as we still as we work on critical challenges that have come to our attention. We believe that we need new and innovative solutions to address some of the challenges we've come across and are really thinking about employing artif artificial intelligence as we look to make Peak more user friendly. And we look forward to exploring a little bit more about data grabbing. So as we said, we want to make sure that Peak remains relevant for our users. So we, Peak needs some intelligence to identify useful and relevant data from a wide array of platforms and data sets out there and retrieve and upload those directly into Peak's repositories. Beyond that, Peak also needs the intelligence to identify the metadata. Like I said during the, during the demonstration, sometimes you need to input that metadata yourself or you need to um, tell, the, tell the system exactly what kind of data is contained within a file. And so we'd also want beyond just being able to grab that data, but also to be able to wrangle it and get it into Peak without too much human intervention. Additionally, as you saw, um, like I said, I am in, based in Botswana, and I have low bandwidth most of the time, and Peak is, is in need of a low bandwidth version of the site. So people like me and people who are in countries with low, band, um, low bandwidth have access to it if at the very least to its key functionalities such as data um, visualizations and annotation. Um, this will be something that I think will be very, very important as we move forward. In addition, I talked a lot about the working groups which are really important to Peak, as these allow people to work collaboratively with each other which is really important in this sector. But unfortunately at this point because Peak's working groups are defined by an organization's email so for example, my PowerForAll email, it means I can only work within the PowerForAll team. However, there may be a time that I want to work with three or four other organizations. And we look forward to exploring a way in which we can have what I would call cross-organizational working groups, where three or more um, organizations work together on documents on peak. So how can Peak support your work and how can you support Peak? Like I said, Peak is a new platform still in beta and user engagement is critical for its development, relevance and functionality. So after the webinar, please, please, please use the platform. Use it by importing new data that you think is relevant for Peak. Use it by working with the, using the working groups for your organization 
and also make new data visualizations that can be shared or saved onto Peak. Of course, as you use Peak, you will eventually also have more things to say to us and probably give us more feedback in terms of any technical issues you encounter on Peak. So if you encounter anything that um, goes awry in terms of account setup or an inability to make a map or chart, please let us know immediately. Like I said, Peak is still in data and, and we're really trying to meet our users' expectations. And the best way we can do that is by making sure our users send us feedback so we know. In addition, I've shown you a few of Peak's um, really unique functionalities. But if you think of a way that we can improve those functionalities or that new functions that you think would be very useful for you as a practitioner, please let us know. Um, there is a feedback form on Peak and you can send us any feedback at any time. In addition, beyond just uploading new data or new data that's needed onto Peak, let us know if you think there's a complete body of work that you think needs to be on Peak. Um, it's essential to us that the data that's on there, the functionalities that are of Peak, are meeting our users. So please let us know. Finally, host your data with Peak. Hosting data with Peak will give your company or your organization's data and finding significant reach. Since Peak's in, um, launched just a few months ago, we have already attracted over 10,000 active users. And Powerfall's communication team goes wide, communication reach rather, goes very wide using both our social media and our newsletter, which reaches over 5,000 people per month. Peak's research team also uses your data, for example, if you upload it onto Peak, to produce fact sheets and resource summaries, which have a very high circul circulation and can make your data much easier to imbibe for a much wider audience. Finally, Though Peak can also take documents and data sets, Peak highlights different topics on a regular basis, which can be used as a channel for media, such as videos, for example, or for infographics that can go out also onto our social media through Powerful.